Right, so I know there's a lot more sophisticated things that you're probably waiting to see, um, but I do want to spend a little bit of time with a very simple and fundamental part of uh, CAD, which is curves. Curves are very important, <laughs> fundamental, for everything um, that you're going to build, whether it's a highly sophisticated surface or, or um, many other reasons why you need good curves. Okay, so um, there's a good curve on this uh, on the screen at the moment. Uh, it's really just it's in 2D, just so we can get our heads around it a little bit easier. Now, I created this curve using a custom feature and a new function within the custom feature. And let me show you. So the custom feature is here, and it's a bunch of points in space. So you can see the uh, the vector here um, for each of the points in space. So it's basically a bunch of in X, and I'm keeping it on the Y plane, and then uh, it sort of does a bit of a lump in the vertical, in the Z direction. Anyway, so I've got these points, and it's an array. And then I use this new function. Now, this new function was introduced probably in, in release 1, 163, or something like that. Uh, it's called approximate spline. And it would have gone undetected by a lot of people, but I just want to throw a little bit of light on it, because it's uh, pretty cool. So basically, with this new function, approximate spline, we can feed it in these um, positions, uh, which are these points. Now, I'm not going to put anything with derivatives, because, but you can also uh, enforce the first and second derivative at each end of the um, curve that we're creating. We can tell it whether it's periodic um, curve or not, and it's not in this case. And then we also provide two very important numbers, the tolerance and the degree. Now, as the name suggests, the approximate, supply, uh, approximate spline is its job is to create a spline which meets, uh, which which passes through these points uh, at a given tolerance, and at the same time with a certain degree curve. Okay, got all that. Um, so we just provide the degree, the tolerance, the list of um, points to pass through, and it's going to give us a nice spline. So this is what exactly what's happened here. You can see we've started from zero and from um, zero, oh, 70, 70 and uh, zero in this z direction as well. And it's cr created this nice curve. Now, I've used, uh, if you can actually have a look at the feature here, and it's a very simple user interface on this one. It uh, contains two numbers, um, the degree and the tolerance. Okay, and the degree uh, is set to three at the moment, a cubic spline. Tolerance is 0 0.1. So now I've set a couple of variables up over here so that I can uh, make some tweaks to it and see what the effect is. Now let's do that. All right, so let's change this to a second do, uh, no, uh, uh, parabolic spline. So a degree two spline here is a little ugly. If we go back to three, you can see how it's different. And if I go to degree five, it's a little bit different again. If I go to degree seven, uh, it's a little bit different again. All right, so the shape is changing, and it's all, but it's all, it's passing through these points, um, and it's just having to do a little bit more uh, wobbling around in order to meet its objectives. Now, just looking at it like this isn't very informative. What we should do, and what we always do, is turn on curvature and surface analysis. So if we do that, I'm going to um, just look at the curvature combs at the moment. So that's this guy at the top here. And you can see it's pretty smooth down here. And then there's a funny little weeble wobble there, and another one there, and another one there. It's kind of like a little sharp-ish um, connection, it seems. Yeah, that's it. I'll use a different word later, but um, let's go with connection for the moment. Now, let's see what happens if I drop it down to uh, degree two again. Somehow it all just got really, really bad. You can see not only is there a um, kind of a sharp edge here, a sharp connection, <laughs> um, it's really kind of uh, discontinuous. All right, so these jumps here are very, very ugly. What if we go the other way? What if we go to do degree five? Remember degree three was the previous one. So we looked a bit funny here, but if we go back to degree five again, 
you see, ah, it's now it's starting to get somewhere with the nice smooth uh, transitions all the way around. So I'll go one more, I'll go to seven. And maybe you could argue that it's a little bit smoother and um, whatever else. But there's a price to pay or there's another consequence of, of doing this. So let's go back to three and let's go and turn on the control point grid. So these purple lines here, the straight lines, where they intersect, boom, 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 are the control points of this spline. Uh, it's another important, uh, I could probably try and find some references uh, to the mathematics of splines. Uh, pretty interesting stuff uh, online for that. So we've got, you know, an endpoint one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we've got eight control points. And if we have a look at the remember here, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So, um, back to this. Now, this was degree three. What if we go to degree two? And you'll see these control points. Uh, yeah, you can see them in there as well. What if we go the other way, though, and go to degree five? Whoa. So these control points are now getting fairly extreme in their positions. And if we go to degree seven, you'll see it's really extreme. So in order to meet the shape, to pass through these points, as which is what was the desired uh, outcome here, we've had to throw control points, or the computer has thrown control points way, way, way away. And this is going to bring us back to sort of a fundamental, almost a golden rule of curve creation and, and surfacing. Um, or there's a couple of golden rules, and one of them is only use as complex or as high degree curve as you need in order to achieve the create shape. Right. Don't use a seven when a three would uh, a degree seven when a degree three would suffice. Um, what you're doing with the degree seven is you're throwing a lot of extra math in here. The equations get pretty crazy uh, to maintain. And if you if you needed to, and if you were doing this interactively, and I'm trying to I'm doing this just from a basic um, you know curve that I created. Yeah, but if you would imagine if you were trying to control these control points, like if this was a, a, a Bezier curve that you'd created, uh, and you were trying to control these control points, in order to make changes to this shape, you would have to manage all of these control points in very crazy positions, and slight changes here are going to have an effect. You know, it's very, very difficult to manage um, those sorts of things. So. Use only uh, as few as control points as you can and as a degree as low as you can, and of course to get the right shape. Now, in some cases, this might not be good enough quality uh, with these little bumps here when we've got this degree three curve, uh, so that might make a case for going higher to degree five. Right, so, um, all right, there's one other thing that I want to do on here, and I've got another custom feature that I've written. Uh, which allows me to evaluate these curves. I, I did this for my own benefit uh, to, to have a little bit more of a deeper look at what's going on under the covers. And again, there's documentation in, in the um, feature script language reference uh, for everything that I'm doing in here. Um, so if I've actually drawn this in yellow, I um, apologize if this doesn't come up very well. Uh, I created these the polylines for the control point grid um, in, in yellow just because I was looking for a, a certain, there's reasons, don't worry, <laughs> there's reasons. So I've got a thing here where I can choose the spline and then show the control points. So these are going to be the same control points as we saw before, or they better be. Um, yes, in fact they are. <laughs> yes. I did get that right. So those control points are still here right? and we can interactively, and this is a really good trick all the time, so like uh, if you use variables uh, you can easily, as the input to one of the feature parameters, uh, you, can, you can have another feature open like my custom feature here, you can have this open and go back to the variable panel and make changes and see the instant effect um, on screen. So you know, I'm looking at you know this crazy situation before, you know, where I've got a degree seven uh, approximated spline uh, in here, and it's uh, you know it's really hard to keep track of where all those are. 
Now, there's one other concept and word, um, and I, I touched on it a little bit earlier when I called some things uh, that I, I detected that there was a, some kind of connection going on. Um, sorry, I can get back to that. Um, when I have this open and I put the curvature control on again, uh, like this. Just remember, I, I talked a little bit about there's some evidence of a connection going on in there. There is, in fact, something, and it's called a knot. And if I, my custom feature here for evaluating curves also has the option just to show the knots. And these knots are highlighted in black here, the big black dots. And um, they're important because they're the connections between, it, it basically it's a piecewise polynomial. That's what these uh, B splines are made up of. And each piece is a degree three, uh, of, is of degree three. So you can imagine there's a bunch of degree three ropes with the knots in between them um, to create them. And, and seeing where these knots are now starts to explain a little bit where you can see these, um, you know, why there, there's things going on um, uh, with those, those connections. So if we change this degree uh, to the degree five, uh, there's actually going to be fewer knots because each of these segments um, has a little bit more complexity in it. It's a degree five uh, segment here, here, here. So there's only three segments. And in fact, I've got this readout at the top, which tells me all of that. Um, sorry if you'd already read ahead. It says it's at a degree five, uh, but there's three spans. We call a, you know, the section between the knots uh, is called a span. And so there's three of them here. One, two, three, and total eight control points. And it's a non-rational curve. You've probably heard this also, this terminology thrown around with um, NURBS or non-rational uniform uh, beast blinds. Right, so uh, let's not dwell on that for the second. Let's just concentrate on, on, um, on knots. Uh, again, so I go up to uh, degree seven. Uh, you can see we actually don't have any knots internal. You know, the only knots, and again, for reasons which are a little bit, we can go into later, but probably not time in this particular uh, demo. When we have a curve, which is of a degree seven curve here, uh, with one single span, uh, this is actually a Bezier, uh, a Bezier curve. Um, but the price to pay for that was having a crazy situation where all of these control points are in kind of really all over the place. Now you can create your own Bezier curve, of course, in on Um and let's do that. Let's go back to, I think this is the, uh, the front plane. Oh, yep, front plane. And let's do a sketch here. And under the tools, um, and that's this regular spline. And there's a special uh, curve option, a sketching option called Bezier. So, you know, we can start there. Let's just start where we said we were going to start. Okay, we'll start there. And now we start trying to build so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we've got, so we've got seven in there now. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got too many. Uh, we created a degree eight um, curve there. So let's get rid of one of these. We just right click on it and say delete sketch entity. So now we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a degree seven Bezier spline. And if we uh, look at the curvature on that, it's going to be um, it's all going to be good. It's all nice and smooth. However, it's a little hard to control. You can see I'm going to try hard to to replicate this curve with these control points. And the problem is, is that, and this is typical of a single span Bezier curve or single span um, spline with lots of control points like this. So it's a degree seven or you know, can even go higher, right? You can make a degree 15 if you want. But the problem is, is that you can't control it very easily anymore. It's very sensitive. Like you can see I'm moving this one, like the second one from the right, I'm moving it here, but there's, it's having an effect on the top of of the top of the spine as well. And, and likewise, if I move the one down the bottom here, you know, it's moving nearly everything. Um, 
So it's really hard. You're going to find yourself chasing your tail to get this to be the shape that you want it to be. So the second, or was it the first golden rule? I <laughs> can't remember. Um, is to only use as much complexity as you need to create the shape. And those curves that are uh, exceedingly, like so many control points, it's very, very difficult to keep track of them. Um, and uh, I think in this case, maybe the, the degree five curve was going to be, um, was going to be sufficient uh, kind of, uh, kind of complexity uh, for for most needs that we would have to come up with um, downstream. So hopefully this is a, just a little bit of insight into how curves uh, are treated in Onshape. There are many ways of creating curves. In fact, you can pull down from this tool set here, you know, there's Helix, there's 3D fit spline. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff with projecting curves, um, you know, bridging them between place. You know, I've already gone into some of those demos before. Now, these curves um, have different sorts of uh, properties. Uh, many of them will give you a cubic uh, spline, so a degree three spline. Some of them, uh, some of the outcomes um, uh, of a bridging curve can actually give a degree five, um, depending on if you have curvature control on each end. Uh, there's implications when you do intersections, and that's probably enough for now. I will come back to and if anyone's interested and fill you in and, and dig deeply on what's happening with intersections and trimming and all those sorts of things.